Okay, I'll go back to my question. Did that make sense then? Do you have a, a problem with the biblical definition, like what the Bible says about Christianity, or what you're seeing lived out among Christians nowadays? Um, not so much. I see. Yeah, no. Uh, your your question makes total sense, and I don't really try. I try not to look at the followers of an ideology to assess the consistency of that ideology, just because nobody's perfect. Um, so okay. I'm not really talking about the behavior of Christians so much as actually the behavior of God that's depicted in the Bible. I have a lot of problems with. Um, gotcha. The, okay. Hi, this Hunter? Yes, hello. Is this uh, L. Pigeon, or is this, I know he said that his father wanted to talk? Yeah, this is L. Pigeon's dad. Okay, so, L. Pigeon <laughs> dad. Um, yeah, basically the, the chat that he sent me said that he explained some of the things that I was saying about Christianity and that you wanted to just chat about, like, Christianity and stuff like that. Yeah, um, guess kind of, I don't know how much... You like to talk about it or how comfortable you feel with some questions. And if I sure. step over the line, just let me know. But don't worry, you know, you're what, not going to step over the line. At, where are you at, like, spiritually with your spiritual beliefs? Just curious. Um, I am kind of an agnostic atheist where I am not content saying there is no God. I'm not content uh, asserting that as a positive claim, but rather I'm more of the opinion that I just don't know. And as far as Christianity goes, I have a lot mostly like internally with what I find to be internal contradictions um, as I was raised Christian and whatnot. I just seem think there are a lot of flaws with the ideology of Christianity specifically. Okay. All right. Now, can I ask you when you say flaws, do you see that what the Bible says about Christianity, or is that what you're seeing lived out among Christians? I'm curious because I'm a pastor, mm -hmm. and could I ask you, when you kind of maybe fell away from the faith, would that be a fair thing to say? Sure. Okay, when that happened to you, can I ask you what age you were? Um, well, I started questioning stuff a while back. That would have been back when I was uh, 19, 20. I, I would have had to be 20. Uh, maybe when I was 20, 21, around that age. And then it really wasn't until last year, actually, that I really started coming out swinging on my channel, uh, talking about Christianity. Okay. Whereas before sure. it was sort of a, you know, my, my audience obviously knew that I no longer considered myself a Christian, but it was more just a behind the scenes, I'm kind of figuring stuff out. And it wasn't until, yeah, last year that I started really um, going after Christians, having a lot of debates with Christians and stuff like that. Okay, gotcha. So, okay, I'll go back to my question. Did that make sense then? Do you have a, a problem with the biblical definition, like what the Bible says about Christianity, or what you're seeing lived out among Christians nowadays? Um, not so much sense? what I see. Yeah, no, uh, your, your question makes total sense. And I don't really try, I try not to look at the followers of an ideology to assess the consistency of that ideology, just because nobody's perfect. Um, so. Okay. I'm not really talking about the behavior of Christians so much as actually the behavior of God that's depicted in the Bible. I have a lot of problems with. Um, gotcha. The, the, okay. The first one I'll, I'll say is just the fact that God is considered just, that we hear, you know, God is just. He cannot be not just. It is a logical necessity that God is just. But yet mm -hmm. he decides who to send to hell based on who believes and who doesn't. So I don't know how that's justice. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. that's like one of my that's one of my major contentions. Sure. Okay. So the like in the area of just the justice of God, that God's holiness demands that He do what's right. Correct. Um, so it, that's Christianity wise. Yes. Correct. Okay. Yeah, that, and that's the view I'm coming from. Right. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm with you. So that he demands that. And I always compare it like to a judge. Well, if a judge didn't punish sinners for what they did for the wrong he's doing, right, he'd be an unjust God or an unjust judge, I guess, in that case. Mm -hmm. So and, and I think that's where we when we talk about the justice of God, that because God is holy, I don't want to say he doesn't have any choice but to, <laughs> you know, punish sin. But because of his holiness, you know, right. it it's, you know, it's just the way it is. But the thing is, is that God isn't punishing the sin. God is punishing the disbelief. 
So like if you had somebody who lived a really good life and they did nothing but donate to the poor, if they don't believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, then according to the Bible, they will go to hell where there's going to be eternal condemnation or damnation. But yet somebody who is a rapist or a murderer, if he accepts Christ right before he's put down by the state, then he would go to heaven. So Mm -hmm. I, I agree that at least what you're saying sounds correct, that yes, God cannot be in the presence of unholiness. So he must, by definition, punish sin. I'm with you on that, but it doesn't seem as though it's the sin being punished. It seems like it's the lack sure. of belief that's punished. Okay, I see what you're saying. Well, I don't think it's so much that God is punishing the lack of belief, but he's punishing the fact that, I mean, we were born, you're, you're familiar with the fall of Adam. Yeah, you know, it, we inherited the sin nature and, you know, being corrupt and separated from God, right? Right from Genesis. Mm-hmm. And covered in sin, sin can never be in God's presence. Right. Therefore, and we look back at the Old Testament, and God in his grace, he gave the sacrificial system, the priest entered once a year, gave the sacrifice, and sins were atoned for. Right. And that was God's way of saying, you know, I'm going to punish the animal, and I, I don't want to... I don't want to get the animal activists mad at me, but, you know, he punished them instead of, you know, instead of the people. So that was God's mercy. Now, you look through the whole Bible, you see God's grace through the whole Bible. Now, a lot of people look at God in the Old Testament as this angry, wrathful God because he destroyed nations. And, you know, it just seemed like there's outbursts of anger, but it wasn't true. I mean, you see god he sent the prophets to the to the nations he sent the prophets to the people to warn them so Mm -hmm. he wouldn't have to do that and you can't we can't take one attribute of god in the exclusion of the other like we can't say god is all loving because then he just overlooks sin. but at the same time we can't say god is all wrath because then we're taking his love out of the equation so the two go hand in hand when you talk about the justice the holiness the righteousness and the love of god so sure, but I, so I, I mean, I agree with this more broadly. What you're saying again, it it sort of sounds right, but like, you like works cannot save a man. So nope. internally in, with Christianity, that's like that's impossible. So mm-hmm. it's not up to a work. Then, like, you cannot work your way into heaven. So then, nope. how does this not just boil down then to God still picking and choosing who goes to heaven based on whether or not they believe? I thought it was, if you believe, you go to heaven. If you don't believe, you will go to hell. I'm pretty sure that's what the Bible says directly. I'll try to find a specific verse. But it's who we're believing and trusting in, right? And you probably know this very well, that when Jesus hung on the cross, God took all of our sin, well, the sin of mankind, placed it on Jesus. Yeah, but then why do we still have to go to hell? Then why do some people still have to go to hell if they don't believe? Because like in Romans 10, 9, and 10 says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That Mm -hmm. God provided the sacrifice, he provided the atonement, but it's the free gift God has given us, but it doesn't become ours until we receive it. And until we receive it, we we don't get the righteousness of Christ, and that's what's needed. That's what's missing in the equation. That's where religion falls short, because... And when I say religion, I'm talking about working our way to heaven, just so I can define that. Sure. But when we stand before God, we're either going to pay for our own sin or we're going to accept the, the payment that was done for us through Jesus. And you probably understand the verse that says that his, he became sin for us who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of Christ. So when we trust Jesus, God declares us just in his sight he declares us forgiven and i used to give a demonstration where i took an old dirty penny and i'd hold it up and i'd say well this is what i used to look like filthy dirty before god but then i trusted in jesus and i placed the penny in my hand closed my fist and say my fist is now the righteousness of christ and that's what god sees because i trusted in him yeah and i right and so you've kind of taken on christ's righteousness so that you can appear as if you are without sin in the presence of God. I get all that, but like this still does boil down then to you need the belief, right? So you're saying in order to right. believe, Faith. it went, by believing you're accepting God's grace, which is a providing a uh, forgiveness for your sins. 
so that you can mm-hmm. then be in the presence of God. But it's still down to belief first and foremost, right? Like yep. you could not go to heaven unless you believed first. Correct. Trusting in Jesus alone. Yep. Right. And that's my my problem is because justice is supposed to be a punishment according to the crime. And there is no crime. In this case, the crime is just not believing. Well, the crime is all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death. So that's the crime that we've committed. We've all offended God, right? Our sins. I mean, there's none righteous is what the Bible says. Nobody has done right before God. And even one sin, right, is going to send us to hell because God can't be in the presence of sin. That's why Jesus' death on the cross was God's demonstration of how much he hated sin, but how much he loved mankind, that he wanted, you know, that forgiveness through Jesus alone. And he provided the way, as Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. Right. So God provided for and atoned for and basically fixed what man did when man sinned and rebelled against God. Right. And no, no, I mean, I understand the gospel message in general, and I, I there are definitely elements of it that I think I can even sort of, um, uh, like, accept as far as an internal consistency. So, like, the believing in Christ on the basis of faith. I get that, because mm-hmm. not everybody's a rational human being, but everybody can have faith. So if the Bible yep. is supposed to, or if, sorry, God's uh, gift is open for everybody— then it's actually easier for everybody to attain that via faith rather than rational thought. So I I get that. Like, I can actually square that away okay. But Mm -hmm. the thing is also is that it's not just you have to have faith and believe or else you will not go to heaven, but also what are we having faith in? We have to have faith in this sacrifice that apparently took place. But yet that's where things start to get messy. I understand, again, that faith is sort of this required thing in Christianity. but like, why? Why, ha- why isn't there just better evidence that, say somebody wanted to have faith, they could have faith, mm-hmm. that's fine. But what about people like me who genuinely are not convinced by faith? I don't really like the concept of faith. I prefer to base what I believe on evidence. So okay. if anything, I feel as though it would make more sense if God made it so that his gift was attainable via faith or via rational means. But when I try to dig into this and try to find evidence of uh, what happened as far as Jesus Christ dying on the cross and whatnot, there's not like a very good hard-hitting evidence. There's mostly just ancient claims. Okay. So I you have I no choice but to have an unjustified belief or else you'll go to hell. And then that adds another layer to it. Like, I get the internal consistency with faith, but now if you don't have that faith, faith in something that cannot really be proven, then you will then go to hell. So it, it's almost like you have to suspend reasonable and rational thought in order to obtain Christ's gift. Okay. Yep. I think I kind of understand what you're saying now. You want more of the physical evidence. I mean, just, Correct? I guess, yeah, sure. Okay. And what would that look like to you, do you think? I mean, like, if you could say, God, I want this one thing and then I'll believe. What do you think that would be? Um, I don't know what single one thing would be, but I mean... I just don't know why of all the times to do this incredible sacrifice that is the necessity and the foundation for our faith and to be with Christ, why would this happen at a time where there's no cameras, nothing that can actually keep very good records, not to mention, um, well, sorry, I don't want to say not to mention there, um, but uh, I mean, something that I think I would find far more convincing would be something like a medical report. If you can give me a medical report where they say, here is a man, he is clinically dead. We have studied him. Three days, we have it. He is clinically dead. And then on the fourth day, here's a medical report showing that he's back alive. Something like that, I think, would probably be far more convincing to me. But what we have is a lot of people's claims that have then been translated, that have then been written down. We don't even have the original manuscripts of the Bible. It just seems like God is not doing a very good job at trying to preserve his message. Okay. I think I, I think I see what you're saying. Yeah, and I, I mean, obviously, unfortunately, I can't present to you Jesus' DNA, right? Well, no, I understand I mean, that. I understand. Just, and I'm, I mean, yeah, that's just not going to. 
And the thing is, is I don't even want to put the, I don't want to set the bar too high where it's unattainable. You know, why doesn't God yeah. come down here right now and tell me he's real? Obviously, I'm not going to do something like, that's just bad faith. But I do think that there, there has to be more that you could come to via rational means. Even if it's not as drastic as, yeah, the medical report thing. Even if it's just like people try to bring up the Bible, but the Bible has errors in it. The Bible has historical errors in it, in the book of Luke, for example. So how reliable really is the Bible? I don't know if I can actually trust the Bible. It does come down to faith. And again, I want to make sure I'm reiterating this repeatedly, that I get the internal consistency with faith. But that's where it ultimately loses me also, is that I don't like needing to believe something that I cannot yeah. test or demonstrate, that I just have to have blind faith in hopes that I go to heaven. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I, I see where you're coming from. Um, I mean, I don't know you very well, but I, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say you're, you're an intelligent person, you're a facts finder, and probably have a pretty high IQ. Is that, would that be correct? I mean, without... You know, oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely, you. I'm incredibly genius. So, no, okay. I'm, I'm kidding. I honestly, I don't know what my IQ is, but I appreciate it. Thank you, and I definitely take yeah. seriously doing research and shit like that. So, yeah, yeah, well, I understand. Yeah. Um, I find a lot of times that people who are very intelligent have a harder time because of that very reason is the fact that you know, okay, well, I'm going to take my changed life. I was an alcoholic for in trouble with the law, all that kind of stuff got changed by God. When I gave my life, everything changed inside me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got that testimony where that was my physical evidence was I had nothing to do with God. I didn't want to step foot in the church. Mm -hmm. um, I used to curse God out, but I came to a point in my life where I said, Lord, I just, I want to trust in you and put my faith in you. I don't remember what I said, but Got down on my knees, and from that moment, everything changed. I had new desires, and yeah, started going my to church. Actually, have Bible. A pretty, my parents actually have a pretty similar uh, story. They were just, they were out, you know, following around the Grateful Dead, being hippies, doing lots of drugs and stuff like that. And then, um, I sure. mean, my dad tells the story that somebody suggested that he read the Bible at one point. I think they even said so sarcastically, but my dad just opened the Bible up to the Book of Matthew, and then that's how he got saved. So I oh, agree too well. that like, yeah, there's lots of, of personal testimony people have, but my issue with that again is just like how I wouldn't look at um, like the bad behavior of Christians to say that Christianity as an ideology is bad. I don't know if I can look at the successes either because people can be inspired to change and change for the better, mind you, even if that thing they believe in isn't actually true. Like there's a lot of people who've been inspired to change and improve their lives for the better who believe that we are some kind of karmatic energy with the universe or something. Like if it's encouraging them to change for the better and stop doing drugs or living a bad life, more power to them. I have nothing wrong with people being religious, but I don't think that speaks to the truth of the actual belief. Right, right. So can I ask you, and maybe this is a little bit more personal, like you said you, you felt like you were a Christian at one time. Is that correct? I mean, my entire upbringing, yeah. And I, I, I know that it's pretty common for people to be like, oh, well, you were never actually a Christian or something. But I know for me, I took it very seriously. Um, now, granted, I was born into a Christian household where that was kind of the norm. So I do think that part mm -hmm. of my struggle was that I was never able to actually discover it myself. Um, yeah. So like that... Is probably almost what kickstarted the issue I have with faith, even to begin with, is that the more I try and dig into Christianity, I feel like I keep coming back with more and more inconsistencies. Or, I mean, it's not just the justice thing with God; it's also the behavior of God, like in the Old Testament. With, um, I'm sure you've heard people bring up like God hardening Pharaoh's heart. Um, this is like a big issue for me too. So it seems as though God contradicts even his own, not his own nature, but he contradicts the same rules that he gives to us as well. Sure. But yeah, I did at one point okay. think I was a Christian. Sorry, I kind of went off on a tangent there. No, that's okay. Uh, the reason I was asking is because I, I see that. And uh, honestly, I think kids who grow up in a Christian home are some of the ones that have the biggest struggles after they leave home mm -hmm. with Christianity because I see a lot of them, and I don't know if it was your case, but I see a lot of them who adopt their parents' faith, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. They're kind of grafted into the Christian religion. They learn the lingo, they go to church, they go to, 
you know, they could they can say the the right words, they know the theology, mm -hmm. but they never had that personal encounter with Jesus. And that and again, I'm not saying that to you, but I see that. And then the other one is is where I, I see people, it's kind of like where God didn't exactly do for them what he was expecting. And by that I mean, you know, people go to the altar when they're six years old, they say the sinner's prayer. Mm -hmm. And nothing's really changed because they're reciting some words and right. they come to Jesus thinking, okay, well, and adults, this happens with adults too, but they come to Jesus, you know, expecting that, oh, well, I've got this problem in life. Well, I'll try this Jesus thing. And they are a Christian for a while and God doesn't fulfill what, you know, they were expecting, you know, they still got sicknesses, they still got problems in life. And so they're like, oh, this Jesus thing doesn't work. So they're, they right. throw that all off and try something differently. And I see that. Well, thankfully, I was taught in a in a way that like I always was of I, I always had an understanding that like hey, becoming a Christian isn't going to like magically fix your life. In fact, being a Christian mm -hmm. oftentimes is more difficult. Um, so like I'm very acquainted with that kind of a perception as well. It wasn't so much that like um you know God failed to come through or something. It was more of just like a a long, slow, and rather unfortunate chain of events. Pretty much just. First, I was born into an environment where, yeah, like you said, Christianity was the norm. You know, I knew all the lingo. I knew the right words. I knew the Bible stuff. And mind you, I wasn't just going along with it for my parents' sake. I truly was, at a time, sincerely interested and invested in he also trying noted to become that I am a an better ape Christian. And I should go F myself. So okay. that's it's not like I've never actually cared. Looking back, I remember mm -hmm. there were times where I sincerely did care. But then these doubts would creep in. And then rather than trying to handle that a little bit more maturely. I was still a little kid and I would have like an anxiety attack. Um, and then that just kind of continued as I got older. And then it became, it eventually reached a point where I was like, I say I'm a Christian. In intellectually, mentally, I believe I'm a Christian, but I don't feel like I am a Christian when I say it. Like I don't feel like I mean it when I say it. Um, was like one of my big problems. So it was just that that kind of pushed me away from this, like, I got to be a Christian. I got to be a, like a good Christian and sort of put me in a place where I was willing to accept that I'm having doubts. And then I was able to kind of assess these things a little bit less um, with a little bit more context, I guess, because, you know, I'd kind of separated myself from the whole religion. Um, and that was when I just it, it started. I started to notice more and more problems. I can't tell you what the first issue was that I noticed sure, or something. Yeah, it's just, yeah. especially now as I've really dug into it, it's like the behavior of God depicted in the Bible, the uh, inconsistency with historical accounts in the Bible, the issue of the Old Testament saying that 600,000 plus Israelites traveled through the desert, yet archaeologists are unable to find any evidence of human civilization at all. And even more so, people at that time tended to leave behind a lot of junk. So there would have been something if it was historically accurate. But like, we don't find any evidence. We don't find anything to even suggest it. So it's sort of like this ongoing issue where first I had doubts, but I felt really guilty about it. Then I broke free of that. Then I started assessing it. Then I started noticing more problems. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. Yep, that does. All right. So you, f you feel like, though, that you at some point in your life truly came into a, a born again relationship with Christ where you like you were born again, you feel like you, you had that happen in your life. And the reason I'm asking yeah. that is okay. The reason I'm asking that is because like I, going back to what I said before, some people, you know, they'll say the sinner's prayer at camp mm -hmm. and it means nothing to them. And, you know, they're just reciting what somebody told them to say. And there's never been a real, experience you know with the lord yeah and you know then so nothing's changed inside spiritually you're still doing the outward works of religion and right i've seen situations where the faith is similar to yours because you know they they, they didn't have the spirit working inside them to say well you know <laughs> you know christ is real what he's done for you is real you know the right. workings of, of god through the spirit inside of them well, I mean, um, I had experiences with what I thought was God also. I mean, I, there were plenty of times I look back and I remember at church, um, just sort of that like warm, euphoric feeling a little bit. But then I've also mm -hmm. heard people say like, 
Yeah, that is something people experience at church, but you can also experience that with more secular music. It's more atmosphere that's resulting in that. It's not yeah. so much like the presence of God as much. But obviously at the time, I didn't know that. <laughs> at the time, I, was, I thought that you know, this, I was in the presence of God. I definitely had experiences that I thought was God talking to me or moving through me or things like this. So it wasn't like, yeah, I, I was never that kid who just like, oh, all my friends are saying the sinner's prayer, so I'm going to go ahead and say it now real quick. Um, mm -hmm. I was serious about being a Christian. I really was. But yet, as I got older and as I started to just be less and less afraid of challenging some of these things, um, that's when it just kind of fell apart for me, especially the Bible. The Bible itself is where I find the most issue where I know we already talked about the faith thing, um, yeah. which you were able to bring a little bit more clarity to that. So I appreciate it. But like the stories of God in the Old Testament with Pharaoh, like I brought that up or God commanded his people to slaughter um, an entire village, including the nursing infants. Just stuff like this that's like, it's really hard for me to wrap my mind around that this is the same God who told us not to murder, but yet God de deliberately, in the Bible says, he is going to harden Pharaoh's heart so that he can show off his miraculous works. Like it was without mm -hmm. question that God was not going to give Pharaoh the free will to even say yes, because God's ultimate goal was to show off his power but like the sure. bible doesn't it say that love is uh kind love is not boastful but yet isn't this god acting in ways that obviously killing people is not very kind but like he's doing so as far as killing the firstborn children uh he, he was doing so in order to show off his miraculous works now maybe god is exempt from this since he's the one who makes the rules but to me that seems pretty boastful also yeah well, I can understand where you're coming from with that. And I don't think there's any Christian who hasn't, you know, questioned that a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 a hard concept to understand. And maybe, you know, maybe we could do another discussion sometime. I don't have time today, but we can discuss some more of these issues like that. Okay. And, you know, I go a little that, bit. Yeah. yeah, a little bit deeper into them. And, well, I mean, do you, are you at a place where, like, are you, like, totally I'm done with this Jesus thing, or do you still have a little spark in your heart where it'd be like, oh, it'd be really nice if, you know, if it was true, because I just want that back again. I mean, I'm not really, I, I try not to think of it that way. Um, I definitely don't want to go into a discussion thinking that like, it doesn't matter what they say. And my mind is never going to be changed because he also noted that obviously I am an if, ape if, if and I'm I should provided go with uh, decent evidence or even just more like, like a, some of these issues, if they're able to be explained away, I think might even help a little bit. Um, but yeah, yeah maybe, maybe we can have a longer conversation sometime because I want to talk about um, the issue with Pharaoh. And then I also want to talk about the whole thing with the biblical slavery um, is a really concerning one. I bring that up a lot. It, like, why would God, the moral God, be okay with slavery? Um, a lot of that kind of stuff is, is more what I struggle with. So if you ever want to come back on another time, um, I'd be more yeah. than happy to have another combo. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, like I said, it, they're probably a little more in depth than what we can do today, but okay. I guess, yeah, I was just wondering where, where you're at. Like if you're like, Hey, you know, there's still that spot in my heart where I really I'm willing like Jesus to, listen. to fill again. I'm absolutely willing okay. to listen and assess critically and honestly what I'm hearing. I'm, I'm not going into any discussion, just blindly, um, just believing or refusing to believe. Yeah. And I mean, ultimately, I mean, faith is, you know, is going to have to be something that comes from within, you know, because nothing I'm going to say to you can change, you know, your heart. You know, mm -hmm. only God can do that. Right. And, you know, th through his spirit. But, you know, and it, it doesn't even mean that you right now aren't still, you know, a child of God, born again believer. It just means you're struggling, you know, and I've known people who have fallen away in the exact same situation you're in. They've right. questioned. And, but you know what, though, with that hunter? I mean, it shows you're pursuing. You're not just blindly saying, well, my parents or my Sunday school teacher told me to believe this, so I do. You yeah. know, you're, you're, you're searching and you're looking into what's true and you're settling it in your own heart. And I mean, that's a good thing. Yeah. And, and I, I've seen God use people who, when they come back around pretty amazingly, <laughs> for well, yeah, purposes. I mean, I'm sure if there's somebody who is is discovering this completely on their own, they're going to be probably more passionate about it. Um, which is oh, again yeah. why I'm yep. still willing to 
listen and, and engage in these conversations with, uh, with good faith. But I really appreciate you coming on here and being um, really respectful. I think this was a really cool combo. And uh, hopefully we can talk again soon. Yeah, well, I appreciate the time, Hunter, and you know, I will, I will be praying for you. You know that God gives you an open heart, and you know that that truth will be revealed to you. Okay, well, I appreciate it, and have a good rest of your day. Yeah, thanks a lot. You too. That was a very nice conversation.